Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome back to another amazing episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, directly not from hell, Mr. Matt Hinshaw. And with me as always, my good buddy from the other side of the planet, who is also not in hell, at least I don't think so, Mysterious Mike Talent. Hey everybody! Uh, no, no, uh, I'm I'm just in uh, intercourse, which I think a lot of people think is the opposite of hell. I would agree; it's probably heaven. Yeah. So, Mike, how are things? It feels like it's been a week since we've done a podcast. It it it, it has been a week. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we're we're such busy people. Um, you know, uh, I th- I think. Uh, we might have to change the uh, cadence of oh, how often we, we put out new uh, podcasts. Uh, Matt, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but yeah, we might be switching back to one a week, at least uh, temporarily, until one more movie start coming out. And two, uh, either of us have time to actually talk, because... The three-hour time difference really screws the pooch for us, especially when I have stuff going on on the weekends. Now, for the rest of the month, I am pretty open on the weekends. I got some stuff here and there, but nothing like this past weekend, which was absolute madness. So, uh, I don't know, Mike. We'll uh, we'll just play it by ear, and we'll record when we can, as much as we can, but at least expect one a week. And also, uh, Cinemia is a major factor as well that screwed me hard. You want to talk about that, Mike? Uh, um, yeah, uh, I, I do want to talk about that, Matt. Um, so y- part of the reason that you had kind of wanted to do this this podcast in the first place was, y- you know, the, the movie pass had come out and, you you know, it was 20 bucks. Uh, I, I mean, at this point, uh, it had changed their, their price and it was, what was it? It was 20, bu- 20 bucks a month. It was started out at ten, and then it bounced around a little bit. But yeah, oh, ten bucks a month, and you could see as many movies as you want. Now, obviously, anyone who's been to the movies in the last ten years know that that's not sustainable. And well, yeah, it wasn't right because and... I literally go and see a movie once a week, and if I get the ticket on Fandango, it's nine fifty at Harkins. It, uh, no. If I get it in person at Harkins, it's nine fifty. If I do it on Fandango, they tack on a dollar seventy upcharge, and it's eleven and a quarter, I think, something like that. Wow, wow, yeah. Um, you know, over over in my neck of the woods, if I go to the fancy theater, uh, it can be as much as uh, eighteen, I think, seventy five for like IMAX and 3D and I don't know, Dolby Atmos. I don't know what they're doing. There's all these things. They're just adding things and you're like, I don't know if this is really worth all this extra money. But dude, the only time it would ever be worth to see something in IMAX is IMAX. See, I've said IMAX twice today. IMAX. IMAX? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got Apple on the mind, dude? No. You you okay? No, I don't want it. It burns us. Okay. But no, uh, I max, and I kind of want to do it if I can get some free time. Uh, I want to go um, see uh, Avengers Endgame in IMAX. I think that would be exactly the thing you want to pay twenty dollars to see a movie. Yeah, I mean twenty dollars. I'll have to admit, I'm starting to sound like an old man. I'm like, oh man, back in the day, I remember watching a movie for five dollars, but. I still think that's a little bit pricey. Yeah, you know, it's getting close to the point where when it comes out on DVD, it it it'll be less than twenty dollars. Now, granted, Blu-ray might be at twenty dollars when it first comes out. I guess it depends, right, on which if you get a digital edition and all these different things, but. Yeah, it kind of depends on what you get. Um, I don't pay attention to it a lot, but I know I buy more movies than you do. Uh, If you buy a Blu-ray with a digital copy, now not the ultra high-definition Blu-ray, just the regular 
high definition Blu-ray. It depends on the film, but usually they come out between twenty one and twenty eight dollars. But right. that's with the Blu-ray and the digital code. Now, if you just get the Blu-ray straight up, which is next to impossible to do anymore, it's closer to twenty bucks. Or if you get just the digital version, like say you buy it from Amazon or Google Play or the iTunes Store or something like that, I believe it's even cheaper. It's between fifteen and twenty dollars. To again, it really depends on the movie. Like, um, what was it? The man who shot Hitler and then Bigfoot. Yeah. The day that came out, I bought that using a coupon I had on Fandango Now, I think. Yeah. And yeah. even brand new, it was like, I don't know, twelve dollars with the coupon, it was less than ten. So that's why I did it. Yeah. So so to me, kind of the measure is if it costs about the same to go see it at the theater. I I I feel like that's too much. Like, because you'd be paying for it twice, essentially. Like, so so if I went and saw it in the IMAX, in all its glory, which I know it would be awesome. I do know that IMAX uh, presentations are really good, and like it's gonna have great sound, it's gonna have great picture. But I'm gonna pay twenty dollars there, and then I'm gonna pay twenty dollars again to get it again. I don't know, man. I feel like that's that's pushing the limits. I feel that IMAX is more of an experience, though, and it's really for those experiential films. Um, the only film I've seen in IMAX, like normal IMAX, no, maybe I've seen more than one. I don't remember now. But I remember my first one vividly, uh, and I've talked about it on here before, was the uh, uh, Dark Knight, I believe. Oh, yeah. Um, I definitely went and saw the Dark Knight because I knew uh, the the action scenes were specifically filmed in IMAX. And when you go to like an IMAX theater, now this is also controversial, which we've talked about before. There's different versions of IMAX. There's like theaters that are converted to IMAX. And then there's like the old, um, what what are they? 12 story high IMAX. Yeah. The legitimate IMAX that they're not 12, but they're like, it's, it's huge. They're yeah, huge, they're like huge three or four screens. story, but yeah, it, like yeah. it's literally looking at the side of a building. Yeah. And so there's two different kinds, right? And if you go to the one that's like the original old, older one, they're just massive. And like, it's so big that it's hard to look at one, like the whole screen at once. You kind of have to like have a focal point and like, try and watch like the center of the movie or the left corner or the right corner because it's so giant yeah and you really want to sit far back on those two yeah yeah you do um and yeah i i went and saw the dark knight and it was amazing the only thing that was a little sad about the dark knight was you know i saw it right right after that shooting that happened in colorado and it was like they were acting weird, but you didn't know why yet because I saw it like so close that I didn't know about the news. Oh yeah, interesting, interesting. Wow. Um, yeah, so that that sucked. Once you found out about that stuff, um, but uh, yeah, that was amazing. And I know that the Avengers, uh, the the Infinity War and Endgame were filmed in IMAX 100%. I think they might be the first movies to be completely filmed entirely in IMAX for uh, like a normal uh, feature film. Well, if anyone can do it, it's definitely Disney and Marvel because they got the money to do it. Because believe it or not, people, you have to pay money to use the cameras if you don't own them. Especially the super expensive, crazy ass giant IMAX cameras. They cost a lot of money to use. They really do. Yeah, I remember um, watching some things. I think it was some bonus stuff on the Dark Knight um, DVD or Blu-ray. They were talking about like Christopher Nolan wanted to use uh, all IMAX for the whole of Dark Knight, but they couldn't afford it. And at the time, he was shooting on film still, and the cameras were only capable of, I think, 12 minutes or something at a time. And he was like, that's not going to work. Some, so, something like that. Like I was like, oh, well, that's a weird problem to have. 
Yeah, well, and that's one thing that's interesting. I've run into that a few times myself. I haven't shot, quote-unquote, movies. I've shot videos for my newspaper work at The Courier back in the day. And digital SLRs, which is what I use, uh, DSLR for those of you, when they first started shooting video, one of the problems is, and they still have this problem to this day, is the digital SLRs get very, very, very hot. And so they can only shoot for so long, and then they shut down. And so now it's getting better. I think it's up to 30 minutes or so now, which is incredible for a consumer-grade camera to be able to shoot that long at that high quality. But when they first were coming out with, the, I think it was the 5D Mark II, they were shooting a lot of commercials with them, a lot of movies, a lot of big-time stuff with them. And their complaint was that exact issue was only being able to shoot for so long, especially not so much movies or commercials, but the documentary filmmakers. Oh, yeah, they hated that. Yeah, I, I, I kind of thought it was a weird issue to have, but it was an issue. And, um, you know, so uh, I thought it was really cool that he even tried to shoot some of the stuff in IMAX. And the stuff he did see shoot, all those, like, wide shots of uh, the buildings or, or, like, the bank robbery in the beginning. Oh, so good. Um, Dude, so. the biggest one is the flipping of that semi-truck, man. That was sick. Oh yeah, and they, you know they actually blew out all those windows. Um, yeah, and oh, that was yeah. an accident, and they were like, they had to pay for all that stuff to get fixed. Like they didn't, so they really flipped it, but they didn't plan for what all the concussion that happened. Yeah, so, they they had to fix a lot of Chicago because of that. But uh, that was still awesome. Like it was such a, it was cool to get it all on film. Um, in some ways, it's really neat that Christopher Nolan really, really, really believes in in practical effects, and it, you know, it, sometimes it makes his movies just that that more real. Oh yeah, dude, I, I'm all about the practical effects as much as you could possibly do. It, everything's just, and we I've had this discussion a few times lately. I don't know if it was you, you or someone else, but like movies, even not to slam Endgame, but even Endgame, you know, it's like. It, it's like a video game, man. Like, I don't know how the actors do it running around in these solid green rooms, you know? And playing like, oh, look, there's the Hulk, but it's really Mark Ruffalo with a big sign on his head, like six feet above his head and stuff. It's, I don't know how they do it. It's crazy. I, I'm all about as much practical as you practically can do, is a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. But, Matt, before we get in uh, too far, I was gonna say I, we need to go back. We need to get full circle here, Mike. I need so, to ask. I need to ask you. What are you drinking? <sighs> well, Mike, thanks for asking. Courtesy of Mister Mile High Show, I am still in the process of finishing off his bottle because that he hasn't made it. But I am holding in my hand a glass of the coffee liqueur and vodka mixture he left with uh some milk in it and it tastes just like a white russian to a level it's delightful oh man that sounds good man uh you know uh should we call you uh lebowski thor yes i am the new spoiler alert thor lebowski <laughs> okay all right or would it be uh, the big thor <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I do know uh, one of my coworkers said uh, Comic-Con this year is just going to be a massive amount of fat Thors. Oh, yeah, dude. It's the easiest costume ever. Yeah, there's just going to be fat Thor Lebowskis everywhere. But All right, Mike. So what are you drinking? Uh, I am drinking a a beer that I've had a couple times on here before. Uh, It's a stone um it's a it's it's an ipa a double ipa uh and it's called fear movie lions um it is a fantastic beer wow double ipa he's doubling down today yeah yeah it's pretty strong i think it's about eight and a half percent that's that's what it says on the can so double So, all right, to complete our full circle conversation on why we got so off topic for the past 15 minutes, um, basically, I'm poor, 
and Mike doesn't have enough time. So that's why we're going back to possibly one a week, maybe two a week when we can help. Maybe we'll do three a week if we catch up or we have downtime. But basically, we don't know what's going on, but we will do our best to, at minimum, have one episode out to our faithful four listeners every week. Dude, you got to stop saying that, man. Have you seen the numbers? We had like... Uh, for Endgame, I think we have like, uh, 45 or 85 streams already. Something like that. What? No. Last time I looked, it was 25 for Endgame. Did you look this morning? No, I did not. I was busy working today, Michael. I'm sorry. Oh. All right. Well. I'll have to uh, look later. Yeah. No, I mean... We 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 got some. It, it might have been a bot on some things, but uh, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take a bot all day long, as long as everybody else that actually wants to listen to our show gets to see it or has an interest in listening. Which reminds me, make sure and tell your friends, spread it around, email it out to everybody. Just send it. Be like, listen to these guys. They're crazy alcoholics. No, they're they're crazy movie nerds who have a beer. Real film nerds. Yes, they're crazy, real film nerds. All right, so speaking of film, Mike, and uh, not such a great one in my opinion, we're reviewing a movie that everybody had already talked about three weeks ago, but there's not a whole lot in the theaters. So, uh, Mike, uh, give us the rundown on Hellboy 2019. All right, yeah. So uh, we reviewed Hellboy 2019. Uh, it's starring uh, David Harbour. Mila Jovovich, Ian McShane, and Sasha Lane. It was directed by Neil Marshall. Uh, its writer uh, was Andrew Cosby, and uh, it's based on the comic book from uh, Dark Horse, uh, written by Mike Magnolia. And the story is uh, based on the graphic novels by Mike Magnolia, Hellboy, caught between the worlds of the supernatural and human, battles an ancient sorceress bent on revenge. All right, Mike, since you're already talking, and I know you actually enjoyed this movie, I think. I don't know. You, you didn't think it was as bad as I thought it was. At least that's the connotations I got. Uh, go ahead. What did you think of Hellboy? Uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't think this was that bad. Um, it got destroyed destroyed by uh the critics um and i thought it was okay now it's it's not a masterpiece uh by any means but i liked it um it's it's uber violent so this is not for kids like it's it's definitely violent but uh super violent but that's what the comic book were so i don't feel like that's too bad um, I don't know. I, uh, the jokes are, it's kind of dry, but I, I mean, I like, I, I, I thought it was okay, man. I don't know. Like, uh, I, I think I, I'm getting the feeling that you're about to tear it apart, but that's okay. We can have differing opinions. I'm not going to tear it apart. I just didn't think it was fantastic. Now I am not going to compare it to Guillermo del Toro's, uh, Hellboy and Hellboy the Golden Army because you just can't. They're completely different styles. The Hellboy's completely different. Not 100% completely different, obviously. But how he is played is different. How he's written is different. How he acts is different. Um, basically, what bothered me about this was it, feel, it felt like, especially right off the start, that it was gory just to be gory, to be like, hey, look, we're doing a rated R Hellboy and we can be as gory as we damn well want to be. And it, I don't think they did it because it was necessary. I don't have a problem with blood, guts, and gore. I just felt like they were doing it as shock value. And I it didn't do anything for me. At times, it was justified. But it was over the top, right off the bat. I mean, there's like some bird pecking out some dude's eyeball. Like, really? That's how you're going to open the movie? Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the exact opening scene. All right. I do. Yeah. Okay. That might have been a little bit odd way to start it. For but, sure. you know, I'm not I'm not complaining that it's gory. I'm complaining that it it they used it as like a crutch to be like, oh, look, this is what we're doing. And then the you were talking about the jokes and the jokes fell flat for me. They fell real hard flat for me. 
And then the story, I, anytime you got to explain so much, the narrator or whoever has to explain so much, you know it's just not going to hit well. And they just had to explain freaking everything in this movie. And it also seemed like they tried to cram too much into it at the same time. They tried to, like, you know, have this apocalypse thing and have this and have that. And it just was, it was a lot to digest. But it also dragged, it's weird. It also dragged a little bit, too. I don't know. I'm not saying it was absolute 100% garbage. I think the critics were way, way, way too rough on it. But I also would not, uh, I'll just come out and say it. I don't think you should go and pay money to see it in the theaters. If anything, wait till it comes out on Netflix or Redbox or one of those and watch it on there. Especially if you're a fan of Hellboy, you probably get a kick out of it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I had a good time at it. I, I don't know. Maybe I was just in the right mood to go see it, but it was, it was just, I thought it was, simple and i didn't feel like the 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 gore was too crazy i mean there's there is a lot of gore but i i thought it was done in a way where it was almost funny which sounds terrible i'm a terrible person but uh i don't know maybe too many too many horror movies for me i guess no i mean sometimes it was funny but like okay it's not really gore but like um uh what is it alice i think it's the character's name where she's like a seer yeah yeah alice yeah it was like come on dude she's how mediums speak through her is she basically throws them up into a stream of constant ectoplasmic ghostiness it was like really that's just kind of dumb and it was gross yeah yeah it was it was it was kind of weird but eh, i just i just make believe I, you know I just go along for the ride. The, this one is... You, you, you can't take it... Obviously, you can't take it too seriously. I mean, there's uh, essentially a, a demon from hell working for good uh, who's somewhat conflicted that he's a demon from hell. You know? What What do you want from us? You know, one thing I did like is how they introduced the uh, BPRD. That was pretty cool. I, I haven't really read Hellboy. Uh, I know... A lot of fans absolutely love Hellboy and live and die by it. They just love that comic book. I haven't really read much, but I liked the uh, idea of the BPRD and, you know, that this uh, movie was just like one story that could be expanded on just purely based on following the BPRD. It's almost kind of like uh, Men in Black in a way, but it's for the paranormal. Yeah, yeah, no, they, 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 they kind of talked about it. It wasn't... You you know how they explain all these other things? They they explain that I I oh well, actually maybe they did they did have a little didn't they have like a little sentence about it like what their purpose was? Yeah, you're right. They did yeah they explained a little bit here that. and there. They didn't really explain how it formed, but they under explained what they did. Yeah, I think you know like a sentence there. Yeah. So anyway, speaking about uh, acronyms or not acronyms, yeah. Maybe acronyms? I don't know. I'm not thinking well. Uh, so, Mike, how does 2019's Hellboy relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Oh, man. Uh, thanks for asking. Um so Hellboy 2019 relates uh, the art director, uh, Paul Kirby, also worked on uh, Captain America the First Avenger. Nice. I love that movie. That's one of my favorites. Have you been uh, uh, re-watching any of the MCU? Um, here and there. I haven't watched a whole bunch of stuff. Like, uh, have you? I, I feel like this is a loaded question. Oh, yeah, dude. I've been putting some uh, stuff on in the background. Or uh, my mom's currently here visiting. And uh, she wants to go see Endgame eventually. I probably won't be taking her. But uh, I'm just too busy. Maybe I'll take her tonight. I don't know. We'll see. Depends if I get this podcast edited or not. But uh, she was rewatching Infinity War. I stepped in for that a little bit. But I rewatched uh, 
Guardians of the Galaxy, the first volume, and I rewatched uh, Captain America Civil War. And it was all when I was kind of editing or doing other stuff. I had it in uh, my screen next to me, kind of in the background. And it's kind of nice. It, it you know, it just brings me back not to talk more about Endgame, but it's just the accomplishment of Endgame is just so amazing. I just still can't get over it. Oh, so awesome. Nice, man. Nice, nice. So, yeah, um, the the in game was was uh, epic. You know, uh, I watched it again uh, this weekend, and I still really, really liked it. Still a perfect score for you, right? Yeah, no, still a perfect score. Yeah, same with me, man. I want to go see it a third time, definitely, at least one more time in the theaters. Like I said, if I could get down and see it at uh, IMAX in Phoenix, I, I might try and do that too. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to a baseball game next weekend, so we'll see. Ah, oh, nice, dude. Nice. So, all right, Mike. Well, let's get into the old uh, the old uh, spoilers for Hellboy. Um, I think we did pretty good this first half not spoiling any of it. So uh, go for it, dude. Uh, any spoilery parts you want to talk about? Uh, not, no, not really. I mean, I don't know. The, you know this this movie. There, there's not a lot to it. Um, basically, it's they're just kind of investigating stuff, like because they work for the uh, what is it called? BPD. BPRD. No. Yeah, BPRD. And um, you know, Hellboy's kind of at a point where he's a little like, should I keep doing this? Like, what's the point? And all these things and. Which is probably one of the more interesting lines in this. Not lines, but like offshoots of the many different stories that are intertwined. Yeah, like he's all upset. And like when he goes to Mexico to to get his buddy, there's a kind of a weird... That's a, actually a really weird um, scene. And um, that was the like one of the first opening scenes, too. It was real weird to open with that. Yeah, where his his buddy is like playing a a, a luchador uh, wrestler at a bar, and apparently he's undefeated, and this guy's been me- missing for what like three weeks or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's been missing three weeks, uh, and so they send down Hellboy. Well, I think send uh, Hell Hellboy goes on his own. I don't think they sent him. Yeah, no, and- I think they were mad that he left without telling anyone too. Yeah, he went down there to go find him, and then, and then there's this uh, kind of disaster wrestling scene with Hellboy, and and oh, it was, it was I mean, that was that was probably gratuitously uh, violent for no reason, but eh, you know, I I I felt like other scenes were better, but it, the movie definitely starts off, I guess, pretty rough. Like well, you're like, what what's going on? Why why are we watching this stuff? Right, exactly. It didn't make sense. Like, maybe they should have started out... They told you the story later of how Hellboy came to be and things like that. Maybe they should have started out like that. I know it's not cool to be chronological, but I think it would have landed better. And, you know, we have no connection to this guy that he's down there trying to save or rescue or whatever. And so, spoilers, but he ends up killing the dude because he's a vampire. And it's like, okay, I don't really care. Because I have no connection to the guy. If we had a little bit of a buildup of a connection, then maybe we would have cared about that fight a little bit more, but we didn't. Yeah. Now, um, that was that was a strange scene. You um, know one of the scenes that I enjoyed a lot, even though the CG was just absolute garbage, was uh, when he was battling the three giants. I thought that oh, was dude. really cool. I was, uh, I was just going to say, that was fun, man. Like, he got his kind of, like... He kind of got his ass kicked, and they were kind of they were funky. I I thought the CG was okay. It's not good, but I didn't think it was awful. Yeah, it's not hot garbage like CG from the nineties, but it's not great, especially not for a twenty nineteen film. But it, that was, in my opinion, I don't know if I would say the best scene, but it was definitely the most fun scene I had there because it was just. It was so unique on the fighting, you know? And they're so big even compared to Hellboy. It was cool. Yeah, I thought that, I thought that was a... No, I did think that was a fun scene. That that was really fun. And, like, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't want to give away too much, but I, I I enjoyed that scene as well. You know, one that I was a little disappointed in was uh, Mila Jovovich as the villain. It her performance wasn't very convincing for me. It seemed like she was just kind of collecting a check, like she was for the last handful of Resident Evil movies. Well, well, for me, I was like, I hadn't seen like. Uh, you know, I was just telling my coworker I hadn't seen Mila Jovovich in a movie that wasn't a Resident Evil movie in forever. Like the only one I could remember outside of Resident Evil was um, The Fifth Element, and I did look back, and she was in another movie, Ultraviolet, which is kind of Fifth Element to E. Yeah, I actually and, have that on DVD. And then I I, I remember her debut was in uh, this iconic cult classic uh dazed and confused but uh and she's barely in that like i think she's matthew mcconaughey's boyfriend or 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 um what's his face uh from goodwill hunting um batman or one of the batmans uh ben affleck yeah, is she Ben Affleck's? But I don't. I don't know. It, well, she's a side character in it. I think she maybe yeah. has one or two lines, but no, she's, she's just basically background eye candy. Yeah, no, she's barely in it. But but other than like the Fifth Element and like Resident Evil, uh, she's been in some other things. But I feel like those are the only like iconic roles. I feel like she hasn't done a lot. Like I'm sure she's doing well and she's fine. But I. I don't know. I feel like she's only like, so I hadn't seen her in a while. I was like, oh, that's cool to see her. And um, all of a sudden, you know, um, it's this movie. And I'm like, oh, she didn't pick a very good movie to come out and do something different, you know? Yeah, but But. she could have put her heart and soul into it a little bit more and done a little bit better. But she chose not to. And I like the idea of Mila Jovovich being a villain. I think that's great. I think that's fantastic. But it just, it really seemed like she just kind of phoned it in to me. She was just not convincing at all as very scary or a villain or, you know, just, she just was kind of there. I don't know. I thought some of the opening scenes, she was pretty good. But uh, the other scenes a little later on in the movie, I felt like it was very... Yeah, she's just there. Yeah, the opening scenes where she's like in the past and she's like fighting uh, King Arthur and all that, those were pretty good. Those were pretty good. But as far as her interactions with Hellboy in the modern day world, I mean, it was just, I don't know. It it wasn't awful, but it wasn't anything special. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This movie's just all right. Um, So, uh... Matt, do you do you want to give the rating, or where where are you at? Where do you want to? Sure, man. You want me to go first? I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. All right, Michael. Like I said, it's not uh, the world's greatest movie. Uh, I had fun parts of it, especially that giant part. Um, you know, I like Ian McSh- McShane a lot. I think he's a really cool actor. Um, he wasn't horrible. He wasn't great. He was just Ian McShane. There's nothing else to say about it. He was doing his thing. You know. Um, so, uh, and, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, David Harbour from uh, Stranger Things. I thought he did well as Hellboy. Um, the comedic timing could have been better. It could have just been bad writing on the jokes on the script or whatever as well. But, uh, I, I think David Harbour is a very good actor. I would have liked to seen, you know, maybe more of his personality come out a little bit in Hellboy, but, uh, you know, he did what he did with what he had. And, uh, oh, also one thing I forgot to mention, um, I remember hearing something about this in uh, the news, like even on like local news, that there was a lot of issues going on on set when they were filming Hellboy. And so I'm sure that probably contributes a lot to the whole overall feel of this movie, you know, from David Harbour's acting to Mila Jovovich actually acting to the writing, because I guess there was just a lot of lot of friction just throughout the entire filming of this whole movie. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't. I didn't even know that. So that could be a major, major issue with it. I, I forgot to bring that up earlier on. I apologize, but uh, that uh, totally could be all it was. It could have been fantastic, but everybody was just at each other's throats. Who knows? 
So anyways, back to my rating. I give Hellboy two and a half reels out of five. Okay. All right. That's a, that's a pretty solid uh, score. Um, yeah, it's below average, you know. Yeah, I I think, um, you know, I, I think I'm going to give this one three reels uh, out of five. Um, I don't know why. I Because uh, you I liked, liked it. it. Duh. Yeah, I, 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 I liked it. Um, yeah, there's quite a few things that aren't that great, but I don't know. I just liked it. Um, so uh, I couldn't tell you anything's too terribly great about it, but it's it's not terribly bad either. I've seen so many terribly bad movies, and I felt like this one wasn't one of them. No, like, I don't think it was. I think the critics are being unfair. I would just say it's not. It's just a bit below average. That's why I gave it to an half. You think it's average, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, for once, uh, we differ, and you're not as hard. Uh, well, I guess you're a little bit harsher than me, but I'm, I'm um, harsh. There's sinks, but you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, That's exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, Matt, do, what do you want to do next week? Do you want to do that new uh, Ted Bundy Netflix movie? Dude, I do want to do that, but I I still have seen Dirt, and I know you haven't watched Dirt yet, or maybe you haven't have, or you have and you haven't had time or whatever. But we could try and squeeze in Dirt this week if you want. But I don't know how busy you are. All right, all right. Um, I don't know if it'll be this week, but we will. Yeah. I'll, I will try and squeeze in dirt. Uh, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but yeah, let's uh, let's review dirt. Well, I definitely though I really want to see that Ted Bundy movie though. I've been itching to watch that since I watched the first trailer for it long many months ago. Yeah, it's like it has a terrible name though. It's like I know. extremely dangerous and I know, vilely it's so evil bad. or something. It's like it's a super long name. Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. Let's do that first, and if we have time, we'll do dirt for our second one next week. So let's just let's just call it right now. We're only going to do one this week. We're not going to rush and you know force it because I don't know. I mean, I'm open tomorrow, but I don't know how you were doing. So let's yeah. go ahead and just stick with uh, just Hellboy this week, and we'll do uh, we'll try and do uh, double up on the Netflix next week. Okay, uh, just to just to clarify the name of the movie, it's extremely wicked and shockingly evil and vile. Dude, it's a whole sentence. It's ridiculous. I know, dude. That's a super long. That's why I got confused. So, oh, dude. Um, you know, I forgot to bring up one not to drop, dude. But I did it again, dude. Long dude. shot. Do you have any interest in seeing that? That's that Seth Rogen, Charlize Theron, uh, rom com. Uh, I do. I do have some interest in seeing it, but um, I think I'm more interested in seeing Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Well, let's stick with that. If we get time, we'll do Dirt or we'll do Long Shot, because I might go sneak off and see Long Shot maybe this week sometime. I don't know. We'll see. Because I like Seth Rogen. I like Charlize Theron. I think they're both pretty good. And it's getting a lot better reviews than most people anticipated. So that's cool. Yeah, no, no, that's really cool. Um, is that out right now, or is that come out this coming? Came week? out this past weekend. Okay, All yeah, right. it dropped uh, the weekend. Everybody's seeing uh, Avengers Endgame for their eleventeenth time. Yes, uh, two billion and counting. Number two grossing, just top Titanic. Let's go and beat Blue People from uh, with Dances with Wolf. I mean Avatar. <laughs> Dancing with Smurfs. Yep. <laughs> Dude, can you believe they're going to do like 9,000 Avatar movies? And it's been what? 10, 11 years since the first one? Yeah, they still they they have 3 coming out and I don't know when they're coming out exactly, but yeah, they're all late, uh, over budget classic uh, James Cameron. But I think this might be the one where he gets burned. He might be done after this. Seriously, I I just I personally don't have any interest to go back to the Avatar world. The first one was cool. Why it made so much money, I have no idea. It was interesting. I, The story is a ripoff. That's fine. But it, the world was interesting. The characters were interesting. I just, I don't, I don't see two or three, five, twelve. I don't see one more freaking Avatar movie. But whatever. Go for it, James. I'll review it. 
Yeah, I mean, we are talking about the guy who's had some of the most prolific movies in the industry. Yeah. Titanic and Avatar. Aliens, uh, Terminator. Well, well, he's had a lot of other good movies, but those are the ones that made so much money. Like, they never thought he could top Titanic and basically mocked him all the time. And then he did Avatar, and they're like, well, shit. <laughs> yeah, he's... He the to quote the classic line, James Cameron just goes, Here, hold my beer. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> yeah, so uh I mean the guy is batting, you know, like a thousand or whatever. So why not? But I fear uh, I don't know. The the avatars did really well over the around the world and not as well in North America. So maybe that'll happen again. I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. I mean, you know, because that's one thing that's interesting is um, not to go back to Endgame, but uh, the reason why Avengers Endgame is just killing it this first opening weekend, sure, the second opening weekend, too, but uh, was mostly actually the uh, um, international box office, specifically China. China just just blew it out of the freaking water, man. Huge. Everybody in China went and saw Avengers Endgame. And so I think if James Cameron taps that market, it's over. Yeah, well, we'll we'll, we'll definitely see. I don't know. Like, uh, the, I mean, yes, a lot of the Chinese market saw it, but their cost to going to the movies is maybe like a third or or even a a twenty fifth of what we cost. Yeah. So uh, they don't make as much off of per person. So I I don't know. I don't know. There's but, also uh, a freaking billion of them too versus how many millions are in the US. So Right, right, right. That's true. That's true. But, you know, us millions will go see it multiple times at a higher price. <laughs> yeah. Well, and of those billions of people, I don't think a lot of them uh, are are uh they're still in rural areas. There's still lots of rural China. Uh, even though there's a lot of city stuff. And I don't know if they they go into town to go watch the movie. Yeah, I bet it's probably tough. Very tough. They don't, like, even our smallest towns here in America typically have at least one movie theater. It might only be a two or three screen or even a one screen. But uh, you'll typically get to at least see a movie in your town, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't think our Western... Uh, movie culture has quite hit China like that, but it it, it is kind of permeating. And I, I know China wants to double down on making their own movies. They they're they're trying to build their own Hollywood, and so we'll see. What do you think they would call that? Because you know they got Bollywood in India. Uh I don't know. I I have no idea. I was going to say something, but then I thought that it might be a little. Uh, not good on un- un- PC, so I stopped myself. <laughs> well, and you don't want to upset PC principal. No, no, because PC principal, he's he's tough to please. Yeah, he's kind of a dick. Yeah, he is. Have you watched South Park? Uh, I have. Uh, are there any new ones? No, there hasn't uh, been a new one for a while. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, I watched this last season, which was gold. Yeah, it was. The, oh, dude, it was one of the season, best seasons in years. It was the best se- Yeah, literally, it was the best season in years. There was so much great material, but, oh, man, the the ambient and, and racist tweeting. Oh, man, there's so many good episodes. The the PC Principal and the PC Babies. Oh, it was it was so good. The Company Store. Oh, yeah, Amazon stuff. Oh, man, it was really, really good. Uh, so we will stop talking about South Park, which we love. Yeah. And we will let you guys uh, get on your way. But... Uh, We will uh, catch you on our next pod, and uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie.